Uh, David got uh, involved first as an investor with Novo Nutrients, uh, turned it around a little bit, and now is currently the CEO. So, David. Yeah, I actually became CEO before investing, so to be clear. But I, uh, I met the inventor of the technologies we use at Novo Nutrients actually through the original F3 meeting in 2017. Uh, so at Novo Nutrients, our mission stated simply is we think over time, our technology can capture a gigaton of carbon emissions and make a significant amount of the high quality protein needed to feed the world. Um, and we. Our technology sits in between two significant problems, both of which have already been referenced in different ways today. The massive amount of carbon dioxide emissions that are being produced by, um, uh, if, if on the previous screen you could um, switch back to, to showing the full slide instead of the presenter notes, that would be great. Um, and uh, the, um, and then on the other side, you know, we, we think about the markets for our products, which include protein ingredients and potentially a very wide variety of food and feed additives. Together today, that's a, actually a half trillion dollar market, right? So not just aquaculture, but um, across all animal agriculture and, and uh, for people as well. So to visualize that a little bit, what we're talking about is uh, a gas fermentation platform that uses carbon dioxide, hydrogen, minimal land and water as a prospects for being carbon negative actually, and, and basically transforms it, the inputs on the left to the outputs on the right from an ingredient and additive perspective. So it's, it's this interesting enabler, uh, a new pillar of the food system that can be decoupled from fossil fuels and can be decoupled uh, from agriculture. Um, this is a very high quality protein at commercial production. We think we can achieve up to 82% crude protein. It's a very high quality protein. If you look at the protein quality score that's used for food, it's significantly higher than ground beef and uh, plant proteins don't compare in any way to this. Um, we have regulatory approval in Japan across all animal feed use. Um, and uh, we'll talk about how we can produce additives like astaxanthin. Um, this is all based on intellectual property in which we've created solutions for a pretty broad variety of problems that are all pretty difficult ones through proprietary strains, through um, energy efficient uh, bioreactors specifically designed for putting gases into water. Uh, and through uh, our synthetic biology approach to precision fermentation, making molecules that the bacteria that we use um, would, would not ordinarily make. Um, so you're not getting the Silicon Valley VC pitch today. This is definitely um, more aquaculture and particularly krill replacement oriented. But to, so to talk about um, how our ingredients have actually performed um, in institutional and commercial trials, um, you know, we saw a very similar performance in safety in the first feeding screening. Uh, we saw comparable digestibility to super prime fish meal or, um, in, a, in, a, in a study there where palatability was also measured. And there we saw some exceptional results. Um, so our products compared to the control had about half the strike time, which is the time it takes from when you introduce the feed into the water to uh, when the fish puts its mouth on it, uh, and also a, a similar half uh, the time to consume all feed. Um, so, and I'll, a little later I'll get into some of the reasons why this may be true. Um, in a shrimp trial with a commercial producer, um, we saw superior um, growth and uh, and FCR. And um, in another trial with the same company. Um, where in the, the shrimp were intentionally challenged with what has been the most devastating uh, disease in, in the sector in, in this century, um, one that's wiped out more than $30 billion in, in value. Um, there was a 20% reduction in mortality uh, from including this ingredient, and that's you know not optimized. This is just sort of, um, uh, you could say we got lucky on that. 
uh, but we think we, we can push that uh, save that reduction even higher. So to get into um, some of the details about what makes uh, materials like we make our Novotine uh, natural protein or our Novoceutical astaxanthin uh, different from krill meal. Um, you can see that whether you're talking about the low end of the protein range or the high end of the protein range for krill meals or for the products that we can make um, where you have a significant advantage. And then in, even when we significantly uh, dilute our product down to uh, 500 ppm, that's still about five times the astaxanthin that is in uh, uh, krill meal. Um, so this is not a scientific slide. I want to reinforce this. this. This is speculative on my part. It's from a business perspective using readily available resources. But um, this is why we think that bacterial single cell proteins generally can be competitive with or perhaps even superior to uh, krill meal um, um, in, in, uh, in aquaculture diets. Um, free amino acids was already mentioned by Rick. And then, you know, there may be effects from peptides, from things like betaine and taurine, nucleotides, aromatics, and organic acids. So um, we were requested to talk about economics as well. And our Novotine natural single cell protein, we're targeting a $2,000 a ton uh, sales uh, price point at scale. Um, you know, in looking at the value of krill meal, um, Acker Biomarine, which is the big producer in Norway, saw about $2,400 in revenue from their krill aqua product um, per ton produced. So that's, uh, that's my own estimate there. Um, our Novoceutical will be somewhat more expensive, but it has the added value of also being able to replace the, you know, what is essentially the most expensive uh, you know, per gram uh, uh, additive in, or ingredient in salmon feeds the the acesanthin and uh, and actually we can do canthazanthin as well. Um, we have sample qualities currently uh, available. Um, so why is this all you know interesting? It a big part of it is about cost. So we think that in places in the world where energy is inexpensive and therefore uh, creating hydrogen through electrolysis of water will be inexpensive. At scale, we can have a cost of manufacturing as low as $1.20 a kilo or $1,200 a ton. So this does open up the possibility of, in the future, selling the product, obviously, for less than $2,000 a ton, as cited before. Um, we, this is really the best combination that we are aware of, um, of affordability, nutrition, and sustainability for high-quality protein, um, whether you're looking at the legacy approaches or the other innovative um, approaches, some of which you have heard about and, and will hear about. Um, it is uniquely, uh, has the potential to be carbon negative, as I mentioned before, um, and offers actually savings in water and use of arable land of 100 to 1,000 times um, that of, of plant-based proteins. Um, we've put a lot of effort since 2017 when things were started here in putting um, a team in place that has a lot of industrial experience. There was discussion on the investor panel about have management teams seen the needs of the world from a Series B, Series D public company perspective. Um, Joe Ritter, our chief technology officer, comes to us for more than 20 years uh, at DuPont in central research where he you know, brought at least one product from the bench um, to production of millions of pounds a year. Um, and, uh, and that's part of uh, you know, our fusion of, of startup culture with uh, knowledge from uh, larger manufacturing companies. Um, our model is to license our technology to emitters who have all the incentives to, um, to build and operate these plants. Um, Woodside Energy um, has supported us in our pilot efforts. That's that's public information, and we also have developing relationships with a large fermenter, chemical company, refiner, um, and we also help uh, ensure that the products manufactured can actually be sold with long-term purchase agreements. Um, in terms of where we are now, we're actually days away from closing a Series A. There'll be an additional five million that we'll raise in the four months after that. 
and we'll, we'll finish up our gas pilot, um, get some product into the market in 2025, and then move on to building some uh, very large uh, scale commercial plants. Thank you very much.